Hi guys, how you doing? I hope you've all been well. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Smash Knits channel. I know quite a few of you by the time this releases will be new. So yeah, like welcome. Welcome to our little community. If you have been here before or you're a previous subscriber, thank you so much for sticking around. I really appreciate it. Um, today we're going to be organizing my yarn stash. Very exciting stuff. Now, I have filmed this intro before. This is my second time filming it because the first time I filmed it, I was green. <laughs> so uh, I had to scrap that and refilm this after the fact. So if you see, obviously, I'm wearing different clothes. And if you, you know, kind of see yarn in the background that you didn't previously see, that's why. Because at the time of filming this intro, I've already done everything. So, <laughs> um, but... Anyway, it kind of gives me a better way to introduce everything and what we're going to be doing in today's video. So my whole plan is to organize my yarn stash, kind of pull it all out, go through it all. And I want to get a better idea of what I actually have. I feel like I'm constantly drawn to buying new yarn because I get so excited. There's so much nice stuff out there that I forget what I already have. And I think that has to do with the fact that right now my current storage situation is I've got some um, some big baskets full of kind of random assortment of acrylic yarn that I just kind of shove everything into. I've got like my coffee table covered in, in yarn that I got for my birthday. And then I've also got like my Ikea uh, cubes that are behind me. And those are just filled with all of kind of my nicer yarns, more expensive yarns or yarns that I'm going to be using more frequently. Um, but I, they're not really organized into any particular categories or subcategories. I've just kind of got them randomly assorted, which makes it a little bit more difficult for me when I'm trying to pair a pattern that I found with yarn because I I can't really distinguish how much I've actually got so the plan is to organize it into different categories such as you know weight or material type um, and then as well as to log it all into Ravelry because Ravelry has um, has your stash you can put all your stash I never I never know why it didn't occur to me earlier to like log everything into my stash um, I feel like when I go onto Ravelry and I look um, at particular yarns I'm always looking at the projects but I feel like I've been drawn to looking more at the actual stash to get an idea of what the colors are so it makes sense like why wouldn't I do the same thing and that means that anywhere I go I've got access to my stash and it's just a lot easier to reference than you know rummaging through my yarn but if I do happen to find a pattern I like I can go into my revelry oh yep I've got enough meterage and I know exactly where it is because everything will be organized that's the idea. So um, I'm excited to get into that today with you. So let's not waste any more time and let's get into the organizing of the stash. So I'm starting off by clearing my coffee table. At this point in time, I'm thinking how I'm going to organize it all, how I want to categorize it all. Um, and if you see me in my tracky decks, don't come for me. These are my comfy clothes. I like to clean in comfy clothes because why well, make it more difficult for myself? Oh, so a bunch of flowers that I got for my birthday had shed into this project basket so I had to clean that up so that was a little bit of a roadblock now we resume back to sorting out my yarn the ceremonial first dump I did this in slow mo for you guys you can see there is a blanket in there that is one of my first ever projects it's actually how I taught myself how to knit um, holding my yarn over my finger. So I don't knit continental, I knit English style, but I still drape the yarn over my finger and wrap it around my pinky or weave it in between my fingers like some people do. I find it a lot faster, but I feel I can really get a better tension on my pearls when I do it like this. I 
had to take my jumper off because I was literally boiling to death. <laughs> Here I am just dumping it all into a bin, realizing, wow, these storage cubes really hold a lot of yarn. Like when things are stacked vertically, it doesn't look like it takes up that much of a footprint in your living area, but when you have to pour it all out, wow, that's a lot. second slow-mo for you guys oh so satisfying and then boop <laughs> the one last little cotton ball of yarn You can really see how big this pile is. You never realize how much you actually have until you put it all into one place. It's pretty incredible. Here I am just sorting it. I really am quite overwhelmed with all of the micro decisions I have to make in this moment, how I'm gonna organize it, how I want to separate it into fiber, weight. Yeah, I really was underestimating the amount of time this would take. And to make it even better, I tried to do this right before my mother was visiting <laughs> from the country. So um, note to next time, if I'm doing a big task like this, don't do it just before your mum comes. I'll let you guys enjoy some soothing yarn organizing now. You can see I've got some piles now. I figured out kind of an organizational system. Um, and I'm just kind of wrapping up 
all of the random little mini bowls of scraps that have kind of untangled and gotten a bit messy. So here we have the piles. Now I have all of my acrylic in one pile. Quite a lot actually, <laughs> a lot of spotlight. Then we've got just some random kind of more accessory yarn for like the home. We've got my lace, got some random kind of chunky bulky yarn. Then we've got my big stack of fingering weight, which I did end up adding more to because I went a little crazy and bought some stuff. Then we've got my summer fibers, cotton linen. And then here we've got the massive pile of DK forward slash eight ply yarn. Wow. Okay, so I have successfully kind of sorted them into their respective piles forward slash categories. Um, the way that I've done it is I did separate the acrylic from the non-acrylic yarn and then I kind of separated that. I've got like a cotton pile and then I've separated the rest that are like wool or like alpaca kind of like you know animal based yarn. I've separated that into its different like the different weights or ply. So I've got all like my lace weight together got all my like four ply forward slash fingering sock yarn together then I've got all my eight ply and then I've just got some like random you know worsted upwards um yarn little pile over there I've also separated um the wool that I've bought from like bigger box stores that I don't really wear a lot um, or like I'm not planning on making anything that I would like wear out of. I've separated that as well. It's so funny because <laughs> looking at it, I'm thinking like, oh, I'd probably donate most of it. Um, but I'm kind of thinking I've got an idea of what to do with it now because it's pretty much white and navy blue. And I'm thinking maybe I do a, um, a what's it called the the sweet shop blanket but do it like navy blue and cream colored and I think that'll be kind of give like a nautical-ish feel which I I'm kind of vibing so looking at it it's funny because like I would never think to do that but looking at them now next to each other I'm like oh that would actually look really good so that's kind of like one of the benefits of pulling out all your stash at once that you kind of see random color combinations that come together that you wouldn't have previously thought to pair so it's pretty good um, but I'm definitely looking at my acrylic pile, like, and being like, uh, I, do I really, am I really going to knit with this? Like I've had this for over a year and I haven't touched it and it's not, not like, it's something that acrylic like this, like these kind of, they're soft and everything like that. It's all this like baby acrylic yarn. I, th I, th I think like at the start I was like, oh yeah, it's cheap. It's easy to buy. Like it's good to have, but it's like, is it good to have? Because what am I actually doing with this? Nothing. Like this is really nice and soft, but I don't like how it feels on my needles because it's squeaky. This I bought because it was on like crazy discount it, and I really like the color, but thinking about making like a whole sweater out of this, I just like wouldn't. I feel like I would just like sweat to death in it because it's acrylic. And then this again, like this is really soft, but... I just like don't like how it feels when I knit like the sensory feeling when I'm knitting with it is just like not a pleasurable experience and and I feel like you know thinking about it, I'm like oh yeah it'll be good to have a jumper that I can just like chuck in the washing machine but really uh, I'm, am I gonna wear this and I feel like the color I don't know the color is not giving it's not giving so I think stuff like that and then I'm just like random like balls that I have like no idea what I'm doing with so I feel like a lot of this kind of acrylic pile like even this like this is just like a big ball a big ball of mess um I feel like this acrylic pile is probably going to get I'm probably going to put up on Facebook marketplace for free because I'm just not going to use it 
I might even just donate it to my local thrift store because I'm sure like the salvos or something because I'm sure somebody will will be like great yay free yarn and I would rather grow to some someone because there's like sweater quantities worth in here so it's not like it's not like you can't make anything out of it I just I just don't think I'll use it I just really do like I've got all this you know you see all this yarn I've got so many sweater quantities like it would be ridiculous to keep it all so yes so now I'm just going to kind of separate the stuff that I don't want to keep anymore and then I am going to um, uh, start to take pictures and uh, put it all into Ravelry. So here I'm just logging them into Ravelry. So for each yarn ball type, I just took a picture, uploaded it onto my computer, put it up on Ravelry and then put all in the details. And then any scraps or anything like that, I weighed um, to make sure that I had the right quantities. I think this really helps because if you are trying to figure out if you have enough yarn for a project, having it all logged into Ravelry with the meterage is so handy because a lot of the times I don't think I have enough to make a project. So I end up buying yarn and then I realize, oh, actually, if I just weighed that and checked what it actually was, I do have enough. So this is just me logging it all in. And here it is, all logged in, all categorized, all put into Ravelry. Oh, it's so satisfying. I don't know about you, but this, this is probably the most satisfying part for me, having it all in there, visually represented, being able to see my entire yarn stash just like in my hand is, is pretty cool. Definitely worth it. Now this is the time where I've actually got to organize it all. I've got to put it all back. <laughs> Now, uh, this is actually the next day because I was so, so tired after the first day. I ended up putting everything into shopping bags and then addressing it later after my mum was gone. Um, so you'll see in this kind of montage of videos of me organizing it all that I do rearrange everything a lot. I also picked up some really cute little baskets from Amazon. These are like collapsible baskets and they were perfect for all of my scrap yarn. Here I'm just sorting out all of my non sock fingering. So we've got my sock fingering up the top with the scraps and my little baskets. And then here I'm just organizing all of my regular fingering that I can use not for socks. getting into the lace. I don't know about you, but one thing that really annoyed me when I was trying to organize this was that, of course, yarn is not perfectly square, so it tumbles and falls and avalanches as much as possible. So there'll be a few instances in this video where you'll see that I try and stack it, but it just all falls apart. And that's, I guess, one of the uh, pain points of storing yarn is that it's not perfectly square. Down the bottom is where I decided to stash all of my DK weight. I've got a lot of it, so I thought this would be the most effective place to put it all. can see I really gravitate towards pink colors. <laughs> I have been trying to get a bit more adventurous and go into blues and greens and now I think I've gone to green 
I've made one green sweater and now I am currently in the process of making another one. And every time I see a new type of green, I'm like, oh, yes, please. But then I forget until I make videos like this that I've got all this beautiful pink yarn, pink and purple yarn. You know, I love pink. I love purple. Why am I not using it? So I didn't realize that I had left out a bunch of lace weight. I had left out all of this Drops Kid Silk that I bought as well as some of my Rico Creative Make It Tweet. So I had to pull everything out of my lace section and redo it essentially. So this again just adds to the amount of time that you have to do everything. But I really didn't understand how much lace I had because I'd been storing all of this drops kid silk in that random pile of acrylic yarn I totally forgot I even had it I think I'm gonna end up making a vest out of it because I can't stand mohair hair against my skin but I really love the blue so again another thing where you just when it's tucked away out of sight out of mind for me Finally, we've got our bulky, chunky yarn. So I don't have much of this, so it's pretty easy, pretty quick. Doing some kind of little decorative finishes, little touches. I've got my yarn scraps, I've got my yarn ball holder, and then this is where I keep all of my notions. So I've got my hand cream, always need that. We've got stitch markers. You know my my knitting needles my interchangeable needles and it's really handy because i can just pick it up and bring it over to wherever i need to use it then i've got little little socks there's always gonna be socks around and my little croissant you know my gorgeous little croissant uh which is my sophie scarf so beautiful i love that berry red color and then here I have my summer fibers. So I decided to put all my cotton and linen into a basket. These baskets are great. They're just from Ikea. I've got heaps left over and I use them to put projects in I'm currently working with or to shop my yarn. Now we're into the baskets. So I decided to make one of the baskets my kind of home decor project basket. So I put all of the yarn that I'm gonna use for like blankets or cushion covers in that basket and then my other one is going to be my project so let's count how many whips I currently have so we have two one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, goodness, 12, 13, and then I reckon there's, yep, yeah, 14, and there is one on the couch. And here's the reveal. <laughs> Okay, so we're finally there. We're finally at the end. We have fully organized the yarn stash. We have categorized it. We have put it all into Ravelry. Oh my God, I feel like I just ran a marathon. I never expected this to be such a huge task. Like you really don't think that you've got that much yarn when it's kind of tucked all away or you've got it kind of spread around but when you actually try and organize it all and put it all into Ravelry wow it was a shock it's also good to kind of revisit my yarn stash because there was yarn in there that I kind of forgot about or 
remembered that I had bought that for a specific project that I hadn't gotten around to yet. So I think it's really valuable to be able to take it all out and really assess and evaluate, like, what do I actually use? What do I prefer? Um, I find that, you know, I'm kind of getting more and more into, um, like, experimenting with my fibers. I had a lot more lace than I thought I did. You know, it's just, it's, it's interesting to see kind of what I purchased at the start, like, more cheaper stuff to where I am now where I am getting more into hand dyed and things like that but yeah I have a lot of yarn I also have as you saw before I have a lot of projects which one day I will make a video where I'm kind of like digging up and reclaiming all of the yarn from that I know I mentioned that I would do that before but yeah it's really kind of a video that I've got to make I feel like it you know filming a video makes me more committed to doing this um like big task I feel like if I had have just done it by myself I might have just given it up and shoved it all in there and not kind of worried about it but I think filming it makes me more accountable uh tell me your experiences if you've had to go through your yarn stash and how you went and kind of where you've grown like did you kind of start off buying more accessible yarn and then slowly grow into kind of more hand dyed more expensive stuff or do you have you always kind of mixed and matched and played around and you know I'm not a yarn snob or anything like that I still like you know my commercial yarns but you know it's interesting to see where people grow and where people prefer like you know at the start I really like mohair now I like can't stand it so it's very interesting how like our taste changes and I think that comes with like color taste and fiber taste and just like overall style in general I think it always is developing and always growing and I think that's one really interesting thing that you know it also correlates with like all of the different yarn that you buy like I will always dress colorfully but I guess it's like you know I look back at my style from a few years ago and I'm like oh did I really wear that versus now I wonder if that's how I'm going to feel about my knitting and my yarn choices because <laughs> I already feel like that about some of my yarn choices like oh did I really buy that but yeah just a little food for thought but thank you so much for watching I hope this was entertaining I never I've never done anything like this before so um let me know if you like it if you like it give this video a like if you want to see more of this content like feel free to subscribe I will have a podcast out soon um where you get to see some of the newer yarn purchases that I've made um in a bit more depth but uh yeah thanks so much for coming along i hope you have a great rest of your day and i'll see you in the next video